All right, hey guys. Um, so today we're gonna take notes. You guys are taking Cornell notes over this, but I'm gonna talk and I'm gonna write some stuff down. You don't have to write down exactly what I write. Um, and in fact, you can even write more if you want, um, but you should be following the Cornell note um, template that I've given you. So today's topic is gonna be um, what are forces? So what are forces? Now, that's not necessarily a note. That's not a piece of information that you're going to put in the notes section. Um, but that's sort of our general topic. What are forces? Um, now, in general, okay, if we're going to say what are forces, the most basic way that we can think of a force, okay, um, we can say that a force is a push or a pull. Okay, a push or a pull. Now, we also know that pushes and pulls are two specific types of forces that we're going to talk later. But in general, if we think about a force in general, every single force pushes or pulls on something. So even if we think about something like gravity, well, we know that gravity is not touching an object and pulling it, but it definitely pulls it in one direction. It tries to get it to move in one direction. So we can think of a force in general as a push or a pull of some sort. Now we know there's a lot of different ways that you can push or pull. Um, okay, so the other thing we need to know about a force is a force is a vector. All right, now we've seen vectors already. We saw vectors with our motion diagram. So vectors are always arrows, okay? Um, the reason that a force is a vector is that just like these arrows, okay, a force has a direction, and a magnitude. All right, so it has direction and magnitude. Um, direction obviously means that every time we have a force, it's pushing or pulling one way or the other. It's not just generally all directions. It's gotta be a specific direction. And a magnitude just means a size, okay? So that means that some forces are bigger than others. So every force has a specific size. So vector means that it has a magnitude and it has a direction. Okay, so that sort of answers our question, what are forces? Um, let's think about this. What do they do? Remember, you wouldn't write something like, what do they do in the main body, in the notes section, of your Cornell notes because that's not a fact. Um, but what do they do? It could be something that goes on the question side. All right, so what do they do? Well, we obviously know that they can move things. All right, so any force has the ability to move something and we saw that in every single one of our labs that the one balloon can move another balloon um, or the string can pull the car um, or gravity can move something downward. Um, so move things is something that obviously happens, but there's something else that we haven't talked about, and that's that forces can also deform things. So if we think about what that word deform means, deform just means to change the shape, okay? Change the shape, or it could even change the size. And so if we think about that, if forces are big enough, sometimes they change the way things are shaped. So if you sat on a soccer ball, you would uh, exert a force on that soccer ball, and it would probably change it from a round shape to sort of an oblong shape because you'd be sitting on it, and it'd be deforming and changing the shape. Um, and we can even deform, so like in a car crash, obviously the, the shapes of the cars are deformed because of the force of the car crash. So deform things is another thing that that forces can do. Um, okay, the other thing, so sometimes, and we saw this, sometimes forces don't do anything, all right? So, so forces don't always have to move or deform something for there to be a force. So um, particularly this usually happens when forces are balanced, okay? So um, if I'm pulling one direction and somebody else is pulling the other direction and the object doesn't move, that doesn't mean we're not applying force. Um, we're just applying equal forces and our forces are balanced. So um, 
Forces can move things, they can deform things, and, and they don't always have to do, do one of those. Sometimes there can be a force without movement or uh, deformation. Um, okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about on our note sheet is the different types of forces. Uh, so we saw, and we talked about this in our post lab review, is that there's a couple different types of forces. So the first type of force is a contact force. Okay, so a contact force, that happens when two things are touching, okay? So we're going to say uh, this, is, we're going to say arise, so it arise, it happens, arise from physical contact. Okay, so it arises, sorry about the bad handwriting, so it arises from physical contact, two things touching. So examples... Um, might be a push. It might be a pull. Uh, so we had a pull happen in our lab when I did the tow truck. That was a pull. Um, in our lab, we also saw that there was a contact force when there was friction. That's a contact force. Um, okay. The other thing that could happen, the normal force is actually a contact force. And I've, I've mentioned a little bit about the normal force, but we'll continue to learn about that. But I want to write it down. The normal force, so that force that keeps you from falling through your chair... That's also a contact force. Um, the other thing that we have are called field forces. Okay? These could also be called non-contact forces. Non-contact forces. Okay, so field forces don't require contact. All right, but instead they use a field. All right, and we can think about lots of different types of fields, okay? Um, and so let's talk about examples of this to talk about different types of fields. So examples might be, the most obvious one is gravity. And we can think about a gravitational field. Hey, Mr. Sartre, what's up? Um, mind if I finish this? All right, so another field, another force that you could have that's a field force is electromagnetic. Electro, let's see if I can spell this right. Magnetic. So the electromagnetic force. We saw that one with the magnet from, uh, from the bottom of the tripod and the paper clip. So electromagnetic, and we can think about an electromagnetic field that causes that force. And the last one is electric. Okay, and so um, electricity, electric fields can cause a force. Now, we are going to see this most often in the form of static electricity. And static electricity would be the balloon example. So the balloons don't touch each other, but there's still a field force there that causes one balloon to move and one balloon to, to stay still. Um, okay, so those are our types of forces, contact and non-contact, which are also called field forces. Now, the last thing. We said that there's always two objects, okay? Always two objects, okay? Now, we're going to name those two objects, all right? The first object is the agent, all right? The agent applies the force, okay? Like think of a secret agent. An agent goes out and does something. All right, an agent causes something to happen. It applies the force. All right, the other one is a receiver. And that seems pretty obvious, right? What's a receiver do? It receives the force. Okay, so that's really important now. In every one of these situations, we're going to be able to identify an agent that applies force and a receiver that receives force, okay? So even in a field force, when two things aren't touching something, there's always an agent and a receiver. So you might think about like, well, Mr. McSparren, in gravity, it seems like there's not an agent. Well, of course there's an agent. The earth is the agent. The earth causes the gravity, so it's applying the field force. Or a magnet is the agent. Even though it doesn't touch the receiver, it still applies the force. Okay, so you've got a lot of stuff. 
Make sure that you've got notes written. Make sure you have questions on the left side. And now it's time to go and write a summary. It doesn't have to be everything you wrote. It's just a general idea of the stuff that you learn. All right. Thanks for listening.